Welcome back everyone. I recently hit level 90 on my warrior and I can now efficiently farm higher level counters. In fact, you could say this video is a sort of part two to one of my first videos where I showed you an easy gill making video with a low level botanist. You can click the link in the top right corner if you want to know more. In today's video, I want to show you an even more lucrative version of this farm. The first thing I needed to do was upgrade my gear. My eye level was averaging 530 when I hit level 90. So I invested a million gil into the Daya Dacho's eye level 640 gear set. Pretty spiffy if you ask me. Just don't look at my meld and material. I'll meld later. I swear. Uh, let's get on to the farm. First, you want to take your botanist to Lakeland. Your botanist should be at least level 75. My bot is wearing the level 70 eye level 350 white script gear, which I was able to buy from farming ocean fishing for the Moogle tombstone event. Now you're looking for the level 80 mature tree nodes in Northwestern Lakeland. My item level is still a little low for the nodes, but I just need to save 250 GP for Field Mastery 3 when I see the Time Warner Zone Skin map, and this will give me 100%. Okay, so this is the Shadowbringers treasure maps. This is the main map I will be farming until Dawn Trail releases. And the maps locations are spread out across all of Novrat. On my warrior, I could have survived the mobs with my previous gear. The problem was the time. You only have five minutes to clear the trash and it takes over three minutes to clear it with the eye level 640 gear, whereas I didn't stand a chance before. I'm not sure if you can solo the trash as anything but a tank, but as a warrior, I can ignore the mechanics, just sit and fire and kill everything with ease. Though a word of advice, if a Medusa spawn, make sure you get out of their AOE because it's bad breath. And any Final Fantasy veteran knows this is a very, very nasty spell. An added bonus to farming these maps, if you're still leveling your Chocobo, your Chocobo will receive XP. You also receive completion towards your Chocobo challenge logs for the week. This alone makes it a plus plus in my book because I love finding farms that complete multiple activities at once. I will warn you though, these maps do take longer to farm. It isn't a quick five minute farm like the time worn leather maps. It will take a good chunk of your time. So you might be asking yourself, why are we farming these? Why do all this work instead of just one-shotting a bunch of level 40 mobs for leaves? Crafters use the leather to make the very popular calfskin rider set. This set is sought after by just about anyone serious about their glamour. So it's a hot ticket commodity. You can use your crafter to craft this set to sell or just sell the leather outright. Since it's glam, you don't even need to craft high quality because nobody cares what quality their glam pieces are. Just a word of warning though, since the set is so popular, that means it's a very competitive market to get into. You will be undercut constantly. And unless you have the time to just sit in front of the retainer, I suggest just farming the leather. Besides the leather, there's also various orchestrion rolls, a wind up voath minion, and various other crafting materials that sell well. And you get a ton of elemental shards. You also have a very, very low chance of getting enchanted elm lumber, which sells upwards of a million gil. The other bonus of Zoner Skin over Time Worn Leather is the Zoner Skin maps have a chance to spawn a portal after opening the treasure box. Portals are a mini dungeon event. It will sink you down to level 80 and I level 505 gear. The portal is broken into five floors. Each floor has a treasure chest with mobs guarding the loot. So if you're not a tank, it's quicker to just ignore the portals and just move on to the next map. The Zoner Skin portals have two versions and it's random which one will spawn. In the first portal, each floor is a Wheel of Fortune type encounter. A big monster will spawn that you need to kill, a blowhole will kick you out, or very rarely, a special chest will spawn. And when I say rarely, I mean I've never seen it happen the whole time I've been farming these maps. The bosses in this portal hit very hard and sadly a warrior can only kill a select few of them. You'll quickly learn which ones are solvable and which ones to just sit down and allow them to kill you quickly. Two of the easier bosses are the King Shark and the Porksy. In the second portal, each floor has three groups of mobs that are fairly simple to deal with on a warrior. Just rotate your defensive cooldowns and don't be afraid to run away in order to allow your blood wetting to come off cooldown. After completing each floor, you'll be given the option of choosing between two doors. One lets you continue on and the other one kicks you out. This portal is by far the easier of the two. 
and I have numerous full clears. Basically, if RNG doesn't kick me out and I don't make a dumb mistake, I'll see the last boss every time. If you are able to finish the portal, you are rewarded with an even rarer item. It's usually an enchanted home leather. So this is another way to turn your daily map into major guild rewards. I tend to do both the zoner skin and time worn leather maps. I'll farm whichever one is needed for the day. I'll also buy these maps off the market board if the price is reasonable. Also, surprisingly not everyone knows this, but you can carry three of any given map on you at a time. To do this, you learn the first one, you place the second one in your chocobo saddlebags, and you have the third one in your inventory. This way I can farm three maps before I have to head back to town to buy more. I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and also be sure to subscribe if you want to see more gill farming and how to do videos in the future. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.